hello friends welcome to engineering tutorial so we will uh, resume our discussion on network theory so it's been a long time uh, that i have uh, posted any video on uh, the topic the subject of network theory so i have posted around uh, 40 or 50 videos but still uh, we will take this uh, topic now so so far we have discussed about uh, the basic concepts related to the electrical circuit analysis such as uh, series and parallel connection of resistors capacitors inductors then uh, basic concepts about resistors capacitors inductors the circuit elements then current division rule voltage division rule source transformation star delta transformation so basic concepts so uh, now we will uh, discuss uh, network theorems okay and there are various uh, uh, no network theorems which are uh, superposition which we are going to discuss today then there is thevenin then norton's theorem then there are other network theorem maximum power transfer theorem reciprocity theorem intelligence theorem there are a lot of theorems but the three main theorems which are you know applied the most they are superposition thevenin and norton's theorem so today we are going to start with superposition theorem and we will solve many practice questions okay on uh, the superposition theorem so that we understand the application of superposition theorem in a good way okay so let's start so the superposition theorem or this principle it uh, allows us okay to calculate the net effect the combined effect of several energy sources be it voltage or current source okay the effect of all those sources voltage or current on particular circuit elements and the combined effect which i am talking about is in terms of voltage drop or current what is the effect of a particular voltage source on a circuit element okay in electrical terminologies the effect means voltage or current only that so effect i am talking about is the resultant voltage or current produced by these energy sources that is voltage and current sources now we know that in a circuit it is not compulsory that there will be only one voltage source or one current source there will be multiple voltage source multiple current source so what is the combined effect of all of those energy sources on particular circuit element and an important characteristic of superposition theorem is that each source be it a voltage source or current source it is considered one at a time okay only one source will be considered the others will be deactivated how we will deactivate it we will discuss okay so we take one source at a time be it a voltage source and current source and determine its effect on the circuit elements in terms of voltage or current how much voltage drop it produces across a resistor or what is the current flowing through that resistor so that so the statement of superposition theorem the most important thing superposition theorem is applicable only for linear bilateral networks so what is linear bilateral network so the elements or the networks which obey ohm's law they are called as linear networks so linear network will only contain linear elements okay for example resistor the most popular example of resistor ohm's law v equals to ir linear relationship between voltage and current okay so the network which contains only linear elements that is a linear network and what is bilateral it means the elements which allow the flow of current in both directions they are bilateral elements that means current can flow in either direction from left to right or right to left top to bottom bottom to top whatever okay it is not that it will conduct only in one direction 
okay resistors are that as opposed to an unilateral element can be considered as a diode diode only conducts in one direction okay so also diode is also a non linear element diode transistor they are non linear elements so the superposition theorem is applicable only for linear and bilateral elements circuits or networks consisting only of linear and bilateral elements okay so let us go back to the statement so uh, those the statement of superposition theorem says that in any linear bilateral network containing multiple energy sources that is voltage or current source the resultant effect in terms of voltage or current on any particular circuit element it is the algebraic sum of the effects produced on that element by each source each individual source acting alone while we deactivate the other sources which i was talking about here in superposition theorem each source voltage or current is considered one at a time while deactivating the others the effect of that source that is the voltage or current source in terms of voltage or current voltage drop or current flow is calculated for a particular element so this is the statement now it is very difficult to understand what superposition theorem actually is from this statement we will understand it when we will solve the problems okay there i will say what is superposition theorem and how we will apply it this is just the theoretical part which i thought you should know the statement the basic statement which is what is linear and bilateral elements now deactivating sources so we know that the energy sources the voltage or current source that are connected in circuits there are two types independent sources dependent sources independent sources means the voltage or current they do not have any relation with any other circuit parameter okay that is it has no relationship with the voltage or current in any other parts or element in the network whereas dependent sources they have relationship between the voltage or current across any other part of the network okay so deactivating the sources which uh, we will do in superposition theorem because only one source is considered at a time and all others are neglected neglected means we have to deactivate them so the voltage sources the independent voltage sources are short circuited the independent voltage sources they are short circuited they are replaced by a short circuit to deactivate them and the current sources are open circuited the current source the independent current source they are open circuited this is how to deactivate them and dependent sources are left as they are we will discuss some uh, separate problems on dependent sources to understand them now let us just focus on independent sources okay so the voltage sources are short circuited the current sources are open circuited okay so this is just the theoretical part of superposition theorem now let us solve some problems to understand the application of superposition theorem okay so we just discussed the statement of uh, superposition theorem and what it was all about so now <clears throat> we will just uh, try to apply superposition theorem in a simple circuit okay so this is the circuit <clears throat> sorry it consists of a dc voltage source 10 volt and a current source 5 ampere and they are independent sources they are not dependent and we have two resistors 3 ohm and 2 ohm so we'll apply superposition theorem to find this current i flowing through 2 ohm downwards <coughs> so first let us consider this 10 volt superposition theorem is all about this we have to consider one source at a time so when we consider 
this 10 volt voltage source means we have to open circuit this 5 ampere so the circuit it will look something like this okay this 5 ampere current source is open circuited that is what we studied in the statement voltage sources are to be short circuited current sources open circuited <coughs> so this is open circuited this is 2 ohm this is 3 ohm this is 10 volt now let us term this current as I dash okay so this is a very simple thing I dash here will be equal to 10 volt by the sum of resistances 3 plus 2 ohm which is 10 by 5 which is 2 amperes here no current will flow because it is open circuited so I dash it is 2 ampere the direction of this current is very important which is downward here in the original question the current which is being asked it is also downward so these two are the same <coughs> so this is step 1 we considered the voltage source neglected the current source neglecting the current source means we have to open circuit it then we found out this current through the 2 ohm resistor here the direction is the same as the original current being asked so the current due to the 10 volt voltage source it is 2 ampere this is one half now we will do we will consider the 5 ampere current source and we will neglect the 10 volt voltage source neglecting the 10 volt voltage source means we have to replace it with a short circuit ok so let us do that so now we will consider the 5 ampere current source and we will short circuit this voltage source 10 volt voltage source so we have short circuited it this is 3 ohm this is 2 ohm this is the 5 ampere current source ok <coughs> so now we have to find out this current flowing through this 2 ohm resistance so let us call it I double dash it is also downward we have taken it as downward this direction you can choose arbitrarily as per your choice now here this is a very uh, you know the two resistor form which is very much you know convenient for applying the current division rule ok I have already discussed about current division rule and all the basic concepts related to that you can check out that video in the playlist in the circuit theory playlist it is there so now we will apply here the current division rule to find out this current I double dash so it is the total current 5 into the opposite resistor ok this is the two resistor format so in order to determine the current flowing through this resistance we will multiply this with the opposite resistance first this is the current division rule and then the sum of the two resistors 3 plus 2 so basically 3 plus 2 will be 5 so it will be 5 into 3 by 5 so it will be 3 ampere ok it will be 3 ampere ok so this is the whole thing I double dash is equal to 3 ampere now 
this is also downward okay this is also it is downward i double dash now previously we found out that i dash is equal to 2 ampere downward in the previous case step 1 when we considered the 10 volt voltage source and open circuited the 5 ampere current source in the step 2 when we considered the 5 ampere current source and short circuited the 10 volt voltage source we are getting i double dash as 3 ampere okay this is i double dash this is also downward so both of them are downward so this total current i okay this total current i because of both these sources 10 volt voltage source and 5 ampere current source will be the sum of these two responses so i is equal to i dash plus i double dash i dash because of 10 volt voltage source i double dash because of 5 ampere current source so it will be 2 ampere plus 3 ampere equal to 5 ampere so this is what superposition theorem is all about okay the sum of the response you know the total response at any point in a circuit be it a current flowing through any circuit element or the voltage across any circuit element it will be the sum of the responses because of the individual sources considered alone be it a voltage source or a current source be it independent or dependent they have to be considered alone while neglecting the other independent or dependent sources so this is the superposition theorem applied and we got the result total current i as 5 ampere 2 ampere plus 3 ampere okay so we'll discuss more such questions uh, in the upcoming videos so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to electrical electronics instrumentation and communication engineering have a great day thank you very much